How are you doing today, sir? Really well. And what about yourself? Uh, listen, anytime I'm talking to you is a fantastic day. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for saying that. Oh, I'm I'm being very sincere with you, sir. I You, just like, I mean, tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of people on this planet, your work has inspired me and possibly led to me creating Collider due to my interest in sci-fi and everything else. So I say thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I, I have a million questions for you before I get into the actual film. Uh, I know you are busier than anyone else I know. Uh, I know that you just are always busy. So how many different things are you actually working on right now? I've got a very popular show called uh, uh, The Unexplained. It's uh, on uh, Netflix and on uh, uh Discovery, I think. Um, I am um, this week. Uh, two albums are coming out. There's a children's album which is sweet and available to kids of six, seven to eleven, twelve. Uh, written about anim the interconnection of animals, mushrooms, and trees, and they speak to each other and sing to each other. And I, I believe it's a delightful album. There's also an album of my performance at, uh, at songs that uh, Robert Sher uh, Cherno and, uh, and uh, Dan Miller and I wrote uh, for the Kennedy Center. So I did a performance at Kennedy Center, which we filmed and recorded that film and that recording is coming out now. Uh, there's this documentary that's releasing now uh, there's a number of business. Uh, oh, I've designed two watches. One is coming out now. The other watch will be about six months. Um, I, uh, did a performance, uh, on Monday, uh, at the university of uh, Indiana, uh, 15 minutes before the eclipse. And I did a performance of, uh, of stuff I wrote and I utilized the university band uh, then there's all kinds of businesses that I'm involved in, futuristic business. So one business has invented the, the tricorder, so they can read one uh, disease at a time uh, by uh, reading your spit, reading your saliva. Uh, and then there are other businesses that uh, one, for example, like, uh, I, I used. My life seems to be really charmed. So a group of photo, I'll think of it in a second. Um, proto, proto, and so this business is my image projected, uh, projection, uh, like, like in Star Trek, except obviously it's not my body, but it's such a complete 3D image, it seems real. And the way it's set up, I can see the audience, the audience can see me, and it's like I'm there. And so I joined that company. A week later, I got a call from Australia saying, would I appear in front of 4,000 ad campaign people? I said, I can't fly to Australia, but I can project my image. And she said, that's better than you being there. <laughs> and, so, and so it goes. Uh, many more futuristic ideas that I'm backing because I like the idea of the fact that they may get better, they may be, have a future, and if not, it's a really delightful idea that I'm glad to be a part of. Uh, one other question before getting into the film. I heard rumblings, this might not be true, that there's some stuff going on behind the scenes about a TJ Hooker movie. Uh, is there any truth to that? I've heard the same rumblings, but I think it's the writer's stomach. <laughs> okay, so I think that's it. I, I don't know. I, I not nobody's ever come to me to play some version of whatever they would think of. Okay, I I will move on. Um, wh I, what I think is great about the documentary is how it weaves so many of your performances through your talking, um, it just, it, it just 
it's like a full, it's like a time capsule of your life. Uh, and I think it's just really well done the way it uses all the different performances. What are you actually most excited for fans to see in the documentary? So you're looking at an actor who's done a lot of publicity for a lot of things over the years, publicizing this film that's being released. But the film is a documentary about me. So if I say to you, isn't it wonderful? I'm talking about me. Aren't I wonderful? Aren't I wonderful? That's moved you. It's, it's different. I'm wonderful, aren't I? I can't say that. I mean, I, so I thought, whether it's true or not, that if I didn't see it, I could talk about it more uh, uh, obli more w w with some objectivity. So we can talk about it. And I, I recollect, I dimly recollect everything, not everything, but stuff we talked about. But I can't say what's good and what's bad because I haven't seen it. But from what I'm hearing and all the great reviews we're getting, it's being well received. Oh, yeah, we, we gave it a positive review on the site. And uh, we can be difficult sometimes. I'll admit that. You know? That's, so so some, some venture that gets a positive review really has earned it. Yeah, we don't give them out without unless it's earned. That's what I mean. Yeah, 100%. One of the things that you get into in the film uh, is you talk about your mortality. And as I've gotten older myself... I think about, everyone thinks about their mortality. For me, I always think about what will I miss when I'm gone? And yeah, what, you know, what will I miss out on? What are the answers to the big questions that will be discovered in a hundred years that yes. I won't be here to experience? Exactly. So can you sort of, t but you really do get into your mor mortality. And has that been like something that you've thought about for a long time? Is it something that you've been oh, grappling it gets, with? It gets more and more strident the older you get every birthday this voice gets louder you're gonna die um but there's a previous question prior question and that is when do you know you're dying does a cough mean that's the end of your life a headache some pain or ache that ordinarily you'd laugh off or go to the hospital say i got this ache how many people do we know went to bed and didn't wake up or people who walked into a room and you hear a crash and they just died. And are they thinking, Oh, geez, I lost my balance or I'm dying. I mean, how do you know, how do you ask yourself the question, am I dying? Because it may be just a, you know, a nerve ending. So that's question has occupied me. You get ill. You think, I wonder if that's, gonna kill me yeah I, I know people that have gone to the hospital and they never came out i'm sure you're in the same boat exactly well i wouldn't go in a boat i'd go in a trailer sure one of the things the film also gets into and and you talked about it with uh when you went into outer in, into space is the fact that our planet is so precious and so finite and it just feels like so many people on this planet just treat the earth as a garbage disposal. And I just am desperate to get more people to, to give a shit. What yeah. can we do to give, no, give, give a shit, but do it in the toilet and not in the park. Right. The, yes. I, 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 that's absolutely true. Uh, I had friends, I had dinner with friends last night who just came back from Japan and it reminded me of the, what's his name? The, the guy who was lauding uh, Russia, how clean, the, uh, the subway is and all the food in in the uh, Tucker Carlson Tucker Carlson, and the streets are so clean and these people were saying you know we love our country but coming from Japan where it's so clean and neat and coming to the airports and the bus station and we're so ashamed of of the, this garbage dump that's uh, you know you you, you 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 go along the freeway you've got all kinds of terrible things lying on the side of the road um it, 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 it just requires our citizenry to be aware that the, the jeopardy that this earth is in is very real, that all these things that are going extinct and 
even the things we know about are going extinct. But when you find something that you didn't know existed and went extinct, that's really sad. It took 3.8 billion years for that thing to evolve, and it's gone. And nobody knew it was here or left. Or... So, yes, it's a huge message that I keep talking about. Have you actually been to Tokyo? Because I have, and I was stunned by exactly what your friend said. You could be in the oldest mall or the oldest building, and it's the it's cleaner than any bathroom in America. We shot film down in the underground uh, because they don't speak English there, and you get lost very easily. It's so clean. Yeah, there's no garbage anywhere. It was it was uh, I thought it was amazing, and it's like being on a different planet. I don't know why we don't assign a lot of people. I know they have some looking over the streets, just picking up garbage and filling the potholes. You see how bad the roads are? Uh, yes, my car also says uh, that it has seen the, the road and how bad it is. Exactly. You know, um, so one of the things that is fascinating also about you is that you've maintained this sense of curiosity about everything for what feels like your entire life. And I'll be, I'll be honest, I have not been able to do that. What has been your secret to maintaining that attitude? Well, I don't think it's a secret. I, I'm just, everything, everything, you get used to everything. So you pick up this thing here and you make a call and the sense of extraordinary wonderment has long since left you that in your hand you have the Library of Congress and the London Library, and you're able to make a call to the ends of the earth, all in your hand. Yeah. I mean, if you were to tell somebody prior to this invention, they'd say you're crazy. That's that's science fiction. And prior to science fiction, they'd say, I think we should shoot you. You're not, you're dangerous. So, no. I mean, so the wonderment of everyday life, of everything. I mean, I don't know how that phone works. Do you know how the phone works? Uh, I I, uh, I do not know, except that I'm in love with it uh, every day that it has, it, it's, I mean, it's, it's changed different. the planet's life. Absolutely. And, and there's no telling how many people are getting their education, learning to read, reading books. I mean, it, it might unlock all this potential that human beings have that waste on war. And, and, and so if you can maintain this, you know, where did this bread come from? My Lord, it tastes good. If you could just be aware of, the, of your life and its existence, you know, you, you could find fault that you're not in a forest living the natural life, but the life you can live here of enlightenment and of kindness and of the, the, the poverty being uh, eradicated. I mean, there's so much that is so miraculous and so worthy of pondering. Just ask yourself a question. What am I doing? What am I doing? Get in a car. What are you, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, you, you have done an awful lot of conventions in your life. I have to know, do you have a preference between like the cruise ship the Vegas, the uh, out of the country? Like, is there certain locations that you're like, yes, yes, let's I, do that. My basement would be great. Right, <laughs> right now, I hate to leave home. Um, brings to mind, it's not a convention, but it's a giant trip. I'm going to the Antarctic Christmas week with 250 people on a ship. And there's still... Uh, uh, tickets available and they're fairly expensive it's a 10-day trip it's voyage of a lifetime and it's kind of star trekky and it has it has uh, me and some other s people who are identified uh, in science fiction and it'll be enormously entertaining but it leaves a couple of days before christmas and goes to the antarctic uh I, w when you get offered something like that is it an immediate yes? Or how much are you thinking about that before taking the trip? Because, it, it, I mean, it's a big adventure. I, I think that is a huge adventure. 
to go to the Antarctic. Yep. Then they they said, well, we'll, we'll pay you and, and we'll give you cabins. And, and it was just so beautiful, the idea of spending 10 days with most of my family on that ship with those experiences, uh, the polar bears and the penguins and the kayaks and the ice and the snow and the storms. So that's going to take place Christmas week. Um, it, I have done a cruise ship devoted to Star Trek. I think 2,000 people aboard the ship and, and everybody interested in Star Trek. It's, it's a, I never lose sight of the miracle of it as much as it's sometimes, you know, hey, Captain Kirk, and it's a little bit tedious. The miracle of Star Trek never leaves me. I mean, look, it's what I said at the beginning, though. You and the and your fellow castmates on the original show and everyone who worked on it influenced the entire planet. And it's not too often you can be a part of something like that. There are very few people on this planet that have done what you've done. Well, it's it's a phenomena. Star Trek is a phenomena with all its reiterations and and uh, people connected. It's incredible. I have to ask. Over the years, not so much anymore, uh, but years ago, there was a competition between w whether or not you were a Star Trek fan or a Star Wars fan. There was always a little bit of a rivalry. Had Have you ever actually been asked to be on any Star Wars thing at all? It, or Not really. Not to be a guest. That would uh, that'd be taking it out of the reality of the show uh, and doing a gag. In the same way you know, do a cameo role is, it's show busy. It's not true to the nature of the show. So sure. I've turned, turned those down. Um, but the, I don't look at any of the Star Treks, including the, I've got some buddies on the next generation and I haven't really seen any of their shows. I just don't watch Star Trek. And there's a number of shows I've never watched them that I'm in. As I get, getting back to what I said earlier, which is you've been fortunate to travel this world, is there a location on this planet that you've been to that really, you know, um, inspired you or something that you really want to tell people, if you have the opportunity, you should go there? Well, the answer to where I want to go is my home. I've got a, a lovely home on a hill. I'm looking over the San Fernando Valley. I've got two dogs, they've got their places, you know, we, we've got the, the house pretty much up to snuff and it's a haven. Whenever I have to leave, um, it's onerous. Um, but if you're suggesting what other place would I go, it would have to be where I didn't have to get dressed up, like I could be like this and talk to people like I'm talking to you and sort of do one-on-one -on -one and, and have it very peaceful around me. It suggests Hawaii. I, Hawaii is very nice and not too far from California. Right. You know, um, so one of the other things is you have done so many different roles in your career. Obviously, many people have seen Star Trek. But if someone has actually never seen anything you've done before, what is the first thing you'd like them watching and why? Hmm. I, I can't put a judgment on whether how good it was or how good I was in it. But when I'm asked a question about what I've done, I did a broad, I, I, I did a one man show on Broadway. Um, and a one man show is literally that. No dancing girls, no music, no, no other entertaining aspects. It's you, and whether you're telling jokes or telling stories, it's you and the audience. And I made that connection in New York, and I, and I toured with it uh, quite a few places for some months afterwards. That's probably as tough an assignment and as well worked out as it became. Uh, so that one man show this film on it. I haven't released it actually, uh, but there's a one man show out there. I heard of this company called Legion M. 
Just something to think about. <laughs> when, so as as them, imagine somebody coming up and saying, we're not, uh, we're not going to ask the public for monies, uh, whatever you call it, financing, self-financing. We're going to say to the public, if you give us money, you're investing in the company. You'll invest in the movie you want to invest in and in our company. As a result of which, if we make money, you'll make money. If we don't make money, none of us get paid. And that's their premise. And I was struck by it. That was one of the reasons I decided to do uh, this documentary. And, and perhaps a, a, a way to release your one-man show. Just a thought. My, I'm about to be out of time with you, but I wanted to do a, a, one other thing. A number of years ago, we actually spoke, and you told me you had spent days recording answers to tons of questions so one day when you're not here anymore people could actually talk with you or something along those lines right. how did how did that project turn out is it done have you seen a beta version of it uh, it's done and what it was it was called it's called story file and i did five days in front of a camera 3d and ai and they've put it into a housing, which you can press a button, ask a question, and the machine answers whatever the question is. Since I fed that AI computer five days worth of answers to questions that I was being asked, it's likely that one of the questions you ask me has been asked, and the machine will spot it out. If you ask a question that hasn't been asked, that machine will collate what has been answered in other questions and in all likelihood provide an answer. So it's question answer. Have, have you actually seen, is it in person or is it something that they're still working on? No, no, it's, a, you can buy it. That's, I need to look into this. I need to, I need to figure this out. Um, listen, sir, I, I need to wrap with you. Um, even though I could keep talking. I just really want to say a sincere thank you for giving me your time and I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. The same to you.